Hey, everybody. How you guys doing today? Mighty Mike Nagin here for Read Pop and Emerald City Comic Con. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we have something really, really cool and exciting. We have Sarah Richard here. She's going to be doing a Kids Draw 101. Uh, Sarah, best known for like My Little Pony, German the Holograms, The Ghost and the Owl, Rick and Morty. And she's got a new project coming up called The Lighthouse Closet. Uh, that we're really, really looking forward to. Sarah, welcome to our live kids drawing. Woo! Hi, Kermit Foyle, yay! yay. <laughs> How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I'm, Thanks I'm, so much for that, joining us. Thank you. This is my most professional I've been in weeks. So <laughs> <laughs> I actually brushed my hair for this event, so Whoa. appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> and Jay, look at that. Um, Mine's just growing out into stabbing me in the face at all directions. So. <laughs> yeah, just lick it all back. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to be doing kids drawing today, which is yeah. really exciting. So uh, what are you going to be drawing for us? Well, uh, I was thinking uh, what I usually do when I do live drawing tutorials like this is um, just draw some ponies. Uh, usually I do ponies. like the, uh, yeah, yeah. So I've been drawing ponies probably like seven, eight years now, I guess. So I've kind of figured out a quick easy way to to show you how to draw um draw ponies the way i do it everybody kind of has their own way of doing it but uh yeah i was thinking maybe doing like a profile straight on full body pony show you how to do that sounds um, great yeah Looking if anybody forward. has any requests too let me know but i was kind of thinking about starting out with pinkie pie because she's the easiest one and and she's the most popular ones. and she's like pretty much the most popular isn't she she's awesome and she's the most like Kind of like artistic leaning one because you can have a lot of fun with uh making her stretch and squish and everything oh, so, right on. yeah it sounds good sounds good we're gonna, we're gonna see some pinky pie and yes. folks you know feel free we got some questions for sarah pop them into the comments and you know hopefully we'll get a chance to ask some questions sounds yeah, good definitely. All so right. i'm gonna flip you around uh get you all looking down at the drawing pad uh make sure it's all lined up Sorry, I didn't take a little finagling. Sorry, my nails also look like butt too. <laughs> no worries. All right. So I'm just gonna make sure you guys can see like some of these lines. Yeah, it should work. All right. Uh, so you guys ready? We're ready. All right. So make sure that's there. I'll try not to move this out of this realm of existence. Um, so yeah, uh, the way I draw ponies is kind of coming at it sort of from a animation student um, standpoint. I took animation classes in college and it really taught me how to break down drawing a character. So uh, I figure with us starting to draw the head, um, you know, all, all or most heads anyway, kind of start off as a circle. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is start everything uh, light with all the, uh, the pencil, the pencil line. So what you want to do is have a pencil and maybe have some like markers. Um, because this is going to be how we finish off the drawings. So with your pencil, um, you know, I'm going to draw a little dark. If you want, draw lighter because it'll make it easier to uh, erase after. Now I'm trying to wonder where my pencil eraser went. So I'll just use this guy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I figure we'll do Pinkie Pie. We'll do uh, a profile shot, which means basically we're just going to be uh, seeing her from the side. So start with the head like this. And what I usually do is kind of draw something here to kind of figure out where the front of the head's going to be. Uh, and what you want to do is, is take that circle and kind of put a line right through it. And this is going to kind of help you figure out where the eye is going to be. So within that bigger circle, I want to do sort of a smaller, make it look like an olive kind of, I guess. <laughs> this is going to be where her eye is. Um, let's see. You see that okay? Awesome. Cool. So for her nose, it's kind of going to be like sort of a squished, lopsided triangle. <laughs> Basically, ponies are made up of squished beans and triangles. It's <laughs> what me and Agnes have decided. Um, you're going to want to take that and kind of connect it. Do sort of like kind of kind of a J, I guess, like that. So now you've got kind of that idea there. Uh, as for the ears pretty much it's another sort of squished jelly bean J sort of thing here and you want to connect it to the back of her head right there and that's going to be where her ear is um just to kind of make so it's not uh like a floating zordon head in space that's a power ranger thing i don't know how many kids are going to get that <laughs> but um just 
just going to give her kind of where her neck is right here. Sort of do one of these, which is a kind of, if you, if you were to continue it up, you know, it's kind of like a sort of wanton looking thing, I guess. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Yeah. Yeah, I know. There's going to be a lot of food reference in here. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, what you want to do? Uh, let's have her looking at us. So, you're going to want to draw her uh, her pupil, which is the black part of your eye. And then her iris, which is going to be her colored, the colored part of the eye right here. So, it's going to be, and then kind of where that is right there, you're going to give her her eyelashes, which is just going to kind of come up and around like that and you're gonna want to give her her eyelashes here and give her her lower lashes there i'm so sorry if i overestimated how many lashes she has it's been a long day already <laughs> <laughs> um then you know you want to give her some eye shine there so it kind of gives her a little bit of life ponies usually have a big eye shine here a little eye shine down here Next, the part I always forget is a nostril, <laughs> which seems like a little minute detail, but it's important. She needs to breathe out of her nose. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably been a few covers I've done where they just don't have any nostril. It's a very Voldemort kind of situation. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, but then, yeah, you want to give her a nice little smile, too, like that. And I kind of like to give them sort of open mouth smiles as well. But, you know, feel free to be as subtle or extra, extra as you like. It's Pinkie Pie. So really, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, so now is my favorite part, which is her hair. Her hair is so much fun. There is a method to it. I just kind of like to have fun with it, stay in the, the spirit of Pinkie Pie with it. So I usually start right about here and just kind of go nuts with all her her uh, big waves like that. And I kind of ran out of space over here, so it, it would be much more, <laughs> but she has a little bit of a humidity problem going on today. So <laughs> we're gonna just <laughs> deal with that. Um, and then kind of connect it back to her forehead here. And I've kind of drawn myself into a little bit of a corner where I didn't really give her too much of a forehead, but you can kind of finagle that right here. And that's like, this is just kind of the laying out of all the lines. So when we go back in with the um, with the markers, we can clean up all that as well. So we want to, um, before I forget, give her her little earlobe here. I kind of jump around a lot when I draw, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, I get really excited by doing different areas, so it might be all over the place, but I'm trying to rein it in a little bit too. Um, and then you want to give her, her uh, <laughs> I don't want to say her mullet, but like, <laughs> the back part, the back part of her hair, which is just the same thing. You just kind of have fun with giving her some big oh, old loops. Great. Hey, Sarah, I got yeah, a question from uh, yeah. Taylor Emmerich. Uh, awesome. I got a question from Taylor Emmerich, Emmerich if I'm saying that right. Uh, how did you get into drawing comics? Oh, man. Many, many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually went to a free comic book day. And uh, kind of started drawing my version of comic characters. It was a uh, double midnight comics in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, and that's where I met my rep, uh, comic art house uh, Bob Shaw. He's awesome, um, and he kind of got me starting to go to conventions. And I was able to show my work at conventions. Met a lot of cool people. Saw what everybody was doing. Um, and I I just kind of kept putting my art out there. And eventually, I was able to kind of start getting some jobs in comics. I, I, you know, showed my portfolio. Portfolio reviews are great. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've just kind of been keeping up at that. You know, you always have to promote yourself as an artist. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's just not stopping and not taking no <laughs> for an answer. <laughs> so. Persistence is key. Yes, and it, absolutely, and, absolutely, especially with comics. guys like Bob. You know, Bob's a, a great guy. Having him in your corner also, uh, I'm sure it was a great help. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's like m my second dad. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite people. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, that's kind of like the short nutshell version of everything. It's, it's a tale. It's quite a tale. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <-chi. laughs> What's that? <laughs> but um, -chi, Cause it's a tale. Oh, snap. See, I'm slow today. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
but yeah, uh, real quick, uh, if you want, take out your um, your marker. I'm gonna use this brush pen right here. Uh, it's a pretty popular brush for a lot of the, the pony artists anyway. I know like Andy Price uses these a lot um, and really comic artists use, use these a bunch too. Um, so what we're gonna do here is finish out the drawing. Uh, we're gonna take all our favorite lines uh, that we've drawn and just kind of highlight those. So while there's all these kind of background lines here, it got you building your drawing. So keep them there so you can uh, learn from this in the future. But uh, if you want to start, kind of going along the lines you really like and just bringing your drawing to life. That's, I, I keep everything really loose, so it gives me all these options for, for different lines. Hey, Sarah, I got another question, and, and forgive me if I butcher your name. Uh, Afik Amenudin uh, says, hey, Sarah, what's your top five favorite ponies? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, Rainbow Dash is my girl of the main six. I, I, I get her. <laughs> um, but I like, honestly, I love Zakora. Um, she's awesome. Uh, let's see. Let's see. One, two. Okay. <laughs> um, Dr. Who, sure. because I'm a huge Dr. Who fan, I've actually got Alon Z tattooed right here. So I love him. Um, there, um, it's the Kieran. I mean, Autumn Blaze is really cool. Um, and then top, top, top favorite, is Angel Bunny. It's not a pony, but he's my favorite pretty much because I had a cat who was exactly like him. So it's kind of a cathartic to see Fluttershy have to deal with something that I used to have to deal with, which is a cat that basically wanted to make my life misery every day until I fed him. So, so basically every cat, but you know. <laughs> my daughter, my, my daughter was a big Pinkie Pie fan. She, that was her world for months and months and months. Everything had to be Pinkie Pie. Oh, awesome. She's just so much fun. She's so happy. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what made uh, excited her the most about that, that character. She was just so bouncy. And Absolutely. I think this is Agnes's favorite pony. I can't I can't remember, but every time I see Agnes, she is basically Pinkie Pie. So <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm working on I'll take another question if there's one. I'm just kind of sure. uh, I got one from um, Megan Roy, who's your favorite pony to draw? Favorite pony to draw is, I mean, probably Pinkie Pie. She's so much fun with all her hair. I can tell you uh, the hardest pony for me to draw, and I always say this, and I mean to just get better at it, but Rarity, because her hair exists in three dimensions, and I always get confused where her, how the curls connect to each other, and it just always ends up being like this M.C. Escher kind of mess <laughs> inside her hair for me. So I'm, I'm trying to learn. Andy gives me guff about it all the time where he's like, it's really not that hard. <laughs> what it is. I don't get it. It's my kryptonite. So <laughs> someday I'll be able to write like a dissertation on the physics behind her hair or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole wormhole effect in her hair that just. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you'll see your future if you look deep enough into those curls. So, <laughs> exactly. or maybe the past. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, Time yeah. stretch. Exactly. So, yeah. do you have a particular type of of pencils or markers that you prefer to use? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, usually for markers, it's kind of the well, I guess the Faber Castell ones. I or Faber Castell ones. I really like because uh, you can watercolor over them, and uh, they don't. They don't run, so these guys are, are pretty great. Uh, whereas the Pigma Micron pens will run if you put water over them. These guys stay in place pretty good. This guy, I'm not so sure what he'll do. But as for pencils, uh, the Zebra, uh, is it Pentel or something? This is just my favorite. If I don't have this at a convention, my whole weekend is just off. <laughs> like every drawing is just, it doesn't feel right. Feels like a real Shelbyville situation. <laughs> so <laughs> these these guys are my favorite. I just get them at Staples, and it's just it feels good. Just feels like the right weight and kind of sturdiness. Some of those other mechanical pencils you feel like are just too bouncy, or like the the lead pushes in. And but these guys are these guys are my favorite. Uh, but yeah. usually I go right into watercolor and and gel pens and stuff too. So these are kind of the pared down uh, drawing tools that I usually have. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this Pinkie Pie is pretty much done. Um, if I if I keep going at it, I'm just gonna, you know, 
add something that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> but uh, but that's kind of how you do a profile pinkie pie. Looks and really great. any pony. So, you know, the ponies basically have that same base. You just add new hair. If, if you're doing a, a colt, you just kind of square off the, uh, the nose a little bit. Um, but yeah, I can... Looks great. I love that. I love the hair. Ah, thank you. Yeah, the hair. The hair's where it's at. It's pretty great. <laughs> so, Andy, very, very '80s rocker. That's why I like. Yes, this that's basically how I want to live my life. So you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I can do. Uh, let's see. I can. I can show you uh, um, how to do a quick uh, face on sort of pony real quick. Um, let's see. Make sure this is here. I'll keep this one really quick so we can get into the full body. Uh, pony, oh. which would include a three a three quarter uh, face shot as well, so that'll be worked into the next one. So basically, yeah. So for doing, well, I'll start a little bit smaller because I ran out of room for the hair. So <laughs> um, basically, you keep with the circle, draw it really light, stay really loose with your drawings, hold your pencil lightly. Um, if you hold it too firmly, you're just going to start kind of stiffening everything up. So you want to keep it pretty loose like that. Uh, with the straight on shots, you're going to divide the circle up into four like that. So pretty much with like how we did the profile, the eyes are going to be uh, bisected kind of ovals on each side. Is there any any chat comments or who, who they want this to be? Because it can be anybody at this point. Uh, there, there is not. Uh, Sarah Allen just asked, what do you think of Derpy the Pony? Oh, Derpy's great. Oh, I can do a Derpy. I'll make this. Let's do it. Sarah, Sarah Allen, the person who asked the question, we're going to do a Derpy. We're going to do a Derpy. Sarah, Sarah Richard is going to do a Derpy, and, and we're going to do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this has been pretty much my day, so. <laughs> There's a lot of Sarahs in this conversation. Yes, exactly. All right. So we'll get to her eyes last because it's the best part. But pretty much, um, you know, right, right under your circle here, almost kind of halfway between the bottom of your circle and that midpoint. Put their nose there. Give them little little nostrils. And this is the hardest part for me because sometimes I make them look a little bit too too pig-like. Um, just going to kind of elaborate on those guys. Uh, let's see. Derpy's got, oh, let's do her ears, which is kind of like how you did the, uh, the profile shot. Just make like that J shape, kind of the squished pointy jelly bean sort of shape there. Same thing on the other side. Although this ear is going to get covered up a little bit with her hair, you want to leave it there for your own reference. Or if you want to make any other pony, you know, continue to draw that. Um, let's see, I'm going to give her a big old smile here. She's going to kind of dip below that circle line, but it's all right. We can kind of extend that a little bit. This is just kind of the setting up phase, so it's not, not set in stone. Uh, and then give her a little bit of a neck, so it's not just a floating Zordon again. <laughs> <laughs> I got another quick question for you, or maybe not a quick question, from XSKMV. Uh, do you have any advice for illustration students? I'm sorry, that broke up. What was it? Do you have any advice for illustration students? Oh, absolutely. Um, learn to draw from life. Uh, if you're going to be going into college to do art, um, they are going to want to look at your portfolio full of life drawing. Even if you kind of want to go in for animation, you really like drawing anime or a really stylized cartoon version, draw realism because that's going to get you so much further. Um, because then once you learn the rules, you can learn how to break them. And then that way you can learn how to kind of create your own style. Uh, you don't want to sort of box yourself into just knowing anime or cartoon anatomy because you know you got to be flexible like the best part about being an illustrator or an artist is being as flexible as possible um and uh yeah just just always keep a sketchbook with you all the time always keep drawing um and never throw your drawings away either even if you draw something that you just absolutely can't stand just put it in a drawer somewhere deep, deep back in that drawer because you will come back to it someday and be really happy to see how far you've progressed. Because um, there's a few drawings I wish I had still and uh, I have no idea where they went, probably in the trash. But um, yeah, uh, also uh, this isn't something, you know, a lot of art schools tell you or really the teachers that I've ever had told me, take care of your drawing arm 
because I went through a year of tendinitis and I couldn't really draw very well. And if you want to make this your job, you want to take care of yourself. So learn stretches, stretch your arm different ways. Um, it's one of those things that I wish somebody told me instead of <laughs> finding it out for myself. So I'm a real advocate for like taking care of your, your drawing arm. Um, and then also use reference. Like I'm using reference right now for Derpy. I've drawn her before, but you, you know, there's no shame in using reference. Just quick Google search, whatever you're drawing. Um, anybody who says I don't use reference is just, you can tell sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, uh, I could keep going on, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, keep it to that, I guess. Um, but if anybody no, has any questions fine. about like school or art school or, you know, just, um, just feel free to email me um, or send me something on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Be happy to answer it for you. Um, but yeah. Uh, let's see. So yeah, for Derpy, because she's got <laughs> wacky, wacky wonky eyes, just kind of give her, give her those signature eyes. So I'm starting kind of with the um, the iris, the colored part of her eye, and then I'm gonna fill in the pupil, which actually kind of makes it a little bit easier. I went a little bit backwards on the last one. <laughs> so she's really wonky today, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, like I said before, give her the eye shines in there. Uh, oops, forgot her little mullet. <laughs> give her one of those. The more you keep drawing ponies, the more I realize that they're all based on 80s rockers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, was it? the original one was was in the 80s. Yes. So, yeah, they definitely did a good job carrying all that over. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I just want every pony's hairstyle, too. So it always, <laughs> always has been interesting. <laughs> um, if you want uh, to kind of get ready for the next uh, part of the drawing, we can put our wings in, too. Uh, in a lot of my drawings, I, I kind of make the wings a little bit more... Uh, realistic, but I'll kind of stick with more of the simple ponified version. And that's just kind of, let's see, one, two, three, four. And then give her her smaller feathers here. Um, yeah. So like we did before, uh, we can, you, you can do this on your own after so we can get to the next drawing. But like I said, pick out your favorite lines and then use your your um, your ink and just, like I'll show you right here real quick. Just go over and find your favorite lines um, and finish that out uh, a little later. Because uh, it's basically the same thing. I'll just be showing you the same thing all over again. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a, a straight shot on of Derpy. <laughs> Very cool. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can do you find it next. hard to do to do wings like to keep them symmetrical or, or whatever the case may be? Yeah, yeah. That's symmetry is actually the hardest part about ponies. They seem so simple, and it's that simplicity that really, really makes them actually super hard to draw. Um, and all the uh, symmetry, not the symmetry. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how to talk for a second uh, because derpy. Um, but uh, yeah, the symmetry um, is pretty tricky, and it gets even trickier once you kind of start foreshortening parts of them and like angling them around. Um, which I'll show you in this one, it's going to get a little tricky, but, um, but if there's any other questions, I can answer one of those before I kind of deep dive into, into this next one, if you want. I got one from Lacey Fitch. Awesome. Uh, what is some of the fun art stuff to draw during the hard time in the world? I guess, oh, man. I guess she's asking what, what fun stuff you draw to kind of, kind of help you get through, uh, through the difficult times we're having. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I really, let's see. I, I personally love drawing owls, so I've been drawing a lot of owls lately. Um, that's that's my my kind of comfort subject, I guess. Um, and also kind of spooky stuff. I've been drawing like a lot of cute little skulls with like birds and springtime stuff on them. Uh, but yeah, like anything that involves kind of like happy happy colors, uh, like springtime colors right now, because it's it's really nice to be inspired by you know the weather at the time. It's it's a little harder to paint winter scenes and kind of darker Halloween stuff when it's a beautiful day out. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, you know, paint and draw your pets, you know, that's always really fun. Uh, and then you get to hang out with your, with your pets too. So, um, and really just like drawing like presents for people too. find out what your mom or your dad or your best friend or your brother, or sister, what their favorite thing is and, and draw them a present. And then that really oh. kind of helps, you know, like that's, that's, that's awesome. kind of fun. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. So this is going to be kind of tricky. So everybody do your stretches, get ready. We're going to do this though. And you can do it. I believe in you. 
This is going to be awesome. So I got, I got another quick question real quick before oh, you start. Megan absolutely. Roy wants to know, what's the weirdest cover you ever did? The weirdest cover? Yeah. Hmm. I will say, okay, I did one that was a Discord and Pinkie Pie story. So it had to be weird. <laughs> um, basically, it was, I wish I remembered what number it was too, but it was like Pinkie Pie being lifted up by this weird neon giant space squid. <laughs> And she's like having a blast <laughs> in like discords in a little planet behind them. And then I actually put um, kind of a, a little Easter egg in there of uh, the moon from the Mighty Boosh, which is my favorite show up in the corner. But like a ponified, like a ponified version of the moon. Um, okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the Mighty Boosh and look up the moon. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> it's really good. Um, but that one was pretty weird. Uh but I did do a cover too, not so much weird, but I just kind of was kind of snarky with it, I guess, where I did a pony cover without any ponies actually on it. It was Angel, Angel Bunny um, giving a Tootsie Pop to a bunch of owls. So <laughs> that was pretty fun. <laughs> um, I'm sure I'll think of one like in 10 minutes too. <laughs> like, oh, well, no, if you remember no, a different one you want to talk about, tell us. We, we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, totally. Um, all right. So hope you guys are ready. We're going to do this. I'm going to pick, um, we're going to do Rainbow Dash. This is who I usually do for this drawing because she's so dynamic and it's it's a really going to be a cool dynamic shot. So make sure you stay really loose with your drawing. Don't hold your pencil too tight, which is also bad for your arm anyway. Uh, you want to stay really light gestural. This is going to be a really um, similar way of how animators draw as well. Um, so what we're going to do Give yourself enough room on your paper. I'll probably run out of room, but I'll just draw on my desk or something. <laughs> um, you can see it's not pristine. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're going to do a rainbow dash, and she's going to be flying upwards into the sky. So what we're going to do is we want to do what's called an action line. And this is going to be the direction that you want your drawing to go in. It's basically going to be their spine, too. So it's going to be like the backbone of your drawing. So... Like I said, yeah, an action line going up. You're going to want Rainbow Dash going up like this. This is going to be where her tail follows, her body, and her head, and her hair is going to come up this way too. So it's a very important line. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's going to be the foundation for the whole drawing. So uh, what we're going to want to do is put a circle in here, about really wherever on this line that you want. Uh, that's going to be her head. Like I said, this is going to be her, her backbone. So we're going to add another kind of jelly bean oval here that's going to be her body and then we're going to connect these two because this is going to be her neck and uh, these lines are going to be all over the place this is really just kind of laying stuff out so keep it really light now what we're going to do is we're going to add her legs and this is going to get a little tricky because uh it's, it's going to be something called foreshortening and that's when you have sort of a limb behind another limb and it's going to create kind of that 3D, three quarters shot. So if you break everything down into circles, think of it as like her shoulder here, and this will be her hip here. And then you think of it as her other shoulder over here, and her other hip here. Now, you can have the shoulder and think of it like, like use your arm too. And we're gonna have uh, her kind of like holding her, oh man, so much easier to show this in real life, but like <laughs> basically real quick, we're gonna have her doing this from the side. So that's gonna be her oh. arm, but we're gonna, yeah. So you're gonna have the shoulder down to the elbow here, elbow up to her wrist here, and then wrist down to her hoof, which is kind of like a flattened sort of pyramid. And it seems kind of tricky, just feel it out. Don't feel like you're putting down the permanent lines here. This is going to be the ink for after, but this is just kind of figuring everything out. Then you're going to kind of want to flush each one of these little bits out and sort of like smush the little jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, lots of jelly beans. <laughs> so that's going to be her front leg there. Now we're going to do her back leg and I figure we'll make it so the leg's kind of trailing like that. So uh, think of this as her her hip, go down to her knee, knee to her ankle, ankle, and then her kind of squishy little jelly bean foot. Oh my gosh, well, I probably should have figured this out a little bit earlier. <laughs> 
it's so hard because I, I know how to do it without breaking it down because I've, I've just drawn so many of them. Okay. Of course. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I'm sure it's actually, as, you, as you get better with it, you know, there's yeah. shortcuts and things of that nature. Like, Right. Absolutely. And that's the same thing. Like I, I said before, too, like learning how to draw the correct way, you know how to kind of shorten things down later on. Right. Uh, so actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to move this line up a little bit more right there. There's so many lines here, so I'm still trying to figure it out. Like, keep moving, too, when you're drawing. Like, kind of just keep moving. Keep trying to figure it out. And I think what we're going to do is just kind of actually bring this to here. Make, like, a triangle here. Give her her little ankle over here. And that's going to be her butt there. So it's going to be... Sorry, there's a lot of... <laughs> I haven't broken it down in a while. So something pretty much that, that, that ish and that's just like having your leg there you can make her leg go any which way you want to if you see a uh, reference online where it's going a different way just same thing just break it down where each one of her joints would be remember these guys they look squishy but they they would have bones so you want to make sure you lay out all their skeleton too to kind of give you an idea of where everything goes so um yeah so you you got one side of legs down so you want to do the other side now this is going to be the four short inside same thing. Keep it really light. You're going to want to be like, here's her shoulder on this side, elbow, up to wrist, and foot. And since this is behind this leg, you're only really going to see that. But you will have it laid out so you know that it connects up to her shoulder. So you don't have it like down here or something, not making sense. <laughs> you, you almost draw the whole thing out even though you're only going to see a portion of it, just to make sure for scale and, and yeah. it works. Yep, right. Yep. Just to make sure that they still function as a pony, you know, <laughs> so that they would still be able to run and make sense if you were to flip them around the other side. The thing that works really well too, is if you have a lot of pony toys, those make really good models. It's kind of like what an animator would call a maquette. It's having that 3D model and uh, being able to look at it. And that would really, really, really help you kind of figure out where everything connects on there too. So if you have a, a toy that's got a really cool action pose like this, you're just going to learn so much from it. Um, I actually used to do that. I used to work at Hasbro doing sculpting and I would, you know, learn a lot drawing wise because I'd be looking at something 3D all day. So it really action figures are a pretty useful tool. So, you know, if you have um, a certain action figure you want to you want to get you want your parents to buy you just tell them it's for your drawing future <laughs> <laughs> Santa needs to bring this because it's yes. from our career if you care about my career mom you will buy me this uh, Iron Man <laughs> <laughs> do you have a lot of a lot of toys in your place uh I used to when I yeah when I had more space my place is a little shoebox right now so <laughs> um but I mean, I would I would build things out of uh, like clay and stuff, even just to have uh, a part of something. Um, but yeah, no, I used to have a lot of dinosaur toys for sure. <laughs> that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we got that arm right there. We're gonna do her other back leg. Same thing. Remember that this is about her hip here. Um, we'll stretch this one out a little bit more. So let's say hip to knee, knee to ankle. Maybe make that a little shorter. Yeah, right there. And then give her her kind of little squishy pyramid foot there. And then that's just going to connect there. Since it's behind here, it's going to be a little weird. But that's really all you're going to see. It's going to be a really teeny, teeny little notch there, if anything. And that would just be her ankle and her knee. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that's basically that part um get this out of here because we're gonna move into wing territory so same thing with how we did the action line going up here we're gonna do an action line for her wings and because this is a three-fourth view we're gonna foreshorten again with her wings so they're not gonna be symmetrical on both sides because that would be if she was facing on she's gonna be kind of going this way so what you want to do is kind of keep in mind where her shoulders are you know maybe even give yourself a little guide point right there what you're gonna do because i want her wings to be going up like this is just sort of do a swoosh kind of do something like that keep it really really loose 
You can draw as many lines as you want. Keep them pretty light, though, just to kind of figure out about where you want to go. And from there, I mean, there's kind of no right or, right or wrong. Just kind of start putting in all these feather shapes. And I know there's a certain amount of feathers in the style guide, but I just kind of have fun with it. The wings are my favorite part, so I, I kind of go a little nuts with them. Same thing with this side. Now this side's gonna be a lot smaller than this side because it's technically kind of behind her. So you're gonna wanna draw these shapes a little bit more squished. Kind of like that. So you can see that this kind of fools your eyes to making you think it's closer. This is farther away. Um, and then yeah, just draw those secondary wings and or sorry, feathers in there because that's basically gonna be the top of her wings here. And these guys are gonna be much smaller, a little bit more hidden and flatter back here. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's all the major parts laid out. Her tail, like I said, with the um, action line there, it's gonna follow that. Um, you might wanna move the line a little bit up, just make it kind of parallel like that. But her tail is gonna be following the direction of her body. So just kind of give her a little spikes like that. I guess question for you from uh, Michelle Dearborn. Awesome. She said, what would you recommend for people making uh, OCs, which I guess means original characters? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I would say sometimes simpler is better. I've definitely drawn a few OCs that are like 14 wings and like three horns and armor and everything. And it kind of just gets lost into a big blurb of color. Um, especially, if, you know, when you shrink down your design and you can barely tell what's going on and it doesn't read as well. Sometimes it's just, it's just kind of not as, not as pleasing to the eye. You just got too much going on. So if you, if you kind of make a simpler pony, um, with some really strong characteristics, like pick one really interesting characteristic about that pony. And then you can kind of like work that into their, their background story. Um, you know, be it. Maybe maybe they do have four wings, but you know they're pretty regular. Other than that, or they're a Kieran uh, somehow doesn't have a horn, or you know just like make it more interesting when there's you you say less you, you say more with less with ponies, and that's kind of like withdrawing them too. They're so simplified, but they read so well, and they're so well designed because they are, you know, pretty pared down. Um, that's why it's like it's hard for me to draw Celestia because there's just so much going on with all the colors and the the crown and <laughs> so I'm, I'm a fan of the kind of simpler designs um but uh but yeah i mean if you find something that represents you too like if your favorite color or um you can uh illustrate their temperament or their character through colors too like start looking into color theory it's really amazing how well that is you know really subliminal um and kind of just built into our brains if you see like blue, you kind of think of more subdued. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of a, a blue pony other than Rainbow Dash, I guess, but she's got everything else going on as being so outgoing. Um, like pastels for Fluttershy, like she's very shy and, and you know, cute. So um, yeah, there's a lot of art put into each pony design. So just, you know, have fun with, with figuring out colors and, you know, the <laughs> interior design books are actually really interesting color wise and they'll help you kind of design a character better that way, I think. Oh, that's a great idea. I never, yeah. I never thought of the idea of looking into something that's not necessarily character related, like an interior design book to give you Absolutely. an idea of color and depth and, and other things. Yeah, and then you might decide that, hey, I want to be an interior designer. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or your pony could be an interior designer and you can see what an interior designer has to deal with and that would factor into like their cutie mark or their, their character, you know? Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, just really quick, we're going to do the head, which I might have made a little bit too big, but that's okay. Since there's so many lines, I've got a lot to choose from here. So kind of like how we did the other um, head sketches, you're going to want to make this into four sections or four, uh, yeah, sections anyway. So we're going to want to make this line kind of coming off a little bit, a little bit past the halfway mark. I would say almost even midway between the edge of the circle and that halfway mit, that halfway point. Do that. That's going to be the center of their face. And then you're going to want to do, since she's looking up, kind of give this a little bit of a bend too. You don't want to do straight across. You want to give her kind of like that upward look. So these are going to be a little bit, 
like a little noodly. Same thing with the eyes before. Find that middle line here. Draw that kind of like oval, the bisected halfway oval thing. And then same with the foreshortening like we did before. The next one is going to be like a half version of this. So you're going to want to do like a skinnier, skinnier oval. And just think if you were to take this little oval and put it in here, it'd probably be about that. This is where the nose is going to come off here. And the nose is going to cover a little bit in front of the eye. So same thing, kind of like a little squishy melted pyramid or a J kind of like that. Now this is, you can erase this afterward. This is just kind of helping you figure out where this is. Say their mouth is gonna go here, kind of in between top of their nose and where this connects. A little nostril in there too. You're gonna wanna have her looking up like that. So make, make her looking up. So this would be like her iris. That would be like the color, the pink part of her eye. It's like a cool magenta color. And then her pupil. This one's gonna be really tricky because it's gonna get super, super squishy in here. And you're not gonna see a whole lot, but it's pretty important too. So that's gonna be her iris and her pupil. So like I said, it gets a little bit muddled in there. It looks kind of like a whole lot of just bleh in there, but uh, just keep it, keep track of your lines. We can go over with the, the marker after. Give her the eye shines like that. Don't forget her ears is going to come off the back of her head here and connect the other ear this is going to be a smaller version of that and now her hair which is a bunch of cool spiky bangs and since she's going up you want to give her that motion in her hair too if she was standing still it'd kind of like go over and be like that but that would lose the momentum that you're building so give her kind of like a cool upward like a gust of air kind of pushed her bangs up like that. Even though it wouldn't technically, it would be going down and it would give her like kind of the emo Spider-Man look kind of thing. But you know, you can play with, uh, <laughs> you can play with uh, physics a little bit with these guys and just give her that kind of like real energetic kind of look to her. Do you, do you often, or do you ever try stuff like for, for like the shading and for like the eye shines, like flashing a light in a certain direction to try and get the idea of what it's supposed to be. Or same thing where you're trying to get uh, for the hair, trying to figure out which way it might be blowing. Do you, do you try and, you know, use some kind of actual physical examples to, to help you draw it out? Uh, yeah, um, I should more than I do. Um, it's just because I've been doing it so long, I can kind of figure out where the light direction is coming from. Uh, so with her case, the sun would be up over here-ish, or maybe more over here. The light source wouldn't be over here. So if you're doing a whole illustration, you're going to want all the shadows to be kind of this way. Um, yeah, definitely, you know, uh, take a action figure um, and a flashlight if you're if you're drawing a pony and just figure out where the light would be hitting her. Um, but yeah, do a lot of studies with um, highlights and shadows. That's usually what they teach you early on in art school too. And it really helps kind of help you figure out where light needs to go. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fun it's a fun little exercise doing that with you know that's why they make you paint so many still lives and under a light you know it's a shiny apple is basically <laughs> helping you figure out where the light would hit the apple same thing where the light would hit her eyes so uh, more food for you there <laughs> the bowl of fruit as it were I've seen so many people who, who have a bowl of fruit in their artistic yeah. history oh absolutely yeah totally. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything sort of lined out. Um, it's, it's definitely a hard kind of direction to, to, to jump into. Um, and it's something, you know, definitely to practice after. Um, but just to kind of clear up some of these lines over here, that pen is definitely not working. Um, I'll just show you where things sort of lined up over here. You know, and like I said before, Find your favorite lines and go from there. Rhiannon Gupta has, asks, uh, do you like to color the ponies or are you more into inking? Oh, I like to color them. Actually, uh, everything um, for a while was done in acrylic. And uh, 
Yeah, my favorite part is putting the color in. I'm actually, since I'm so loose with everything, like I really like kind of wet media, like watercolor and acrylics to just kind of play around and smush everywhere. Uh, Same reason why I've never been good at like Copic markers is I'm just not very precise, as you can see by all these lines. (laughs) And um, I like just being able to kind of be loose with everything. So actually the inking is the hardest part for me. As you can see, I still kind of, jump around all over the place a lot um, of work, like uh like the the ghost and the owl uh and and even you did those um tc tarot cards like that's all very painted very like you said acrylic loose uh yep. flashes of color splashes of color um i love yeah. you i really do oh thanks man i really appreciate it yeah i just i'm such like a traditional art nerd like it, I've just started going over to digital and it took a lot for me to do that because I'm like, no, it's not real art. Oh, I'm just being a real butt about it. But it is. It's such a new tool to use and it's very cool. Um, you know, it's you don't have to commit as much as you do with acrylic. Like you have it, an undo button, <laughs> which right, right. is great. Whereas like you kind of just give yourself the opportunity to make mistakes a lot more than if it's like you're putting down paint and you're like, well, this is how it's just going to be, I guess. Um, <laughs> but right. digital has been awesome and really has helped a lot of my traditional. Um, oh my gosh, this like looks terrible. My, uh, my traditional um, work, just because I know from making mistakes that I could easily undo in like Procreate, which is my favorite program on my iPad. Um, it's actually helped me a lot more to kind of figure out new ways to paint and draw stuff and not stress about it too much. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So let's see, give her a little her stripes. I got a question from Bruce Jackstone. Hey Bruce, how's it going? <laughs> Hi Sarah. Any favorite characters outside of my little pony? Uh, such as Looney Tunes, Sonic the Hedgehog, or Justice League? Oh man. Uh, I really, really like drawing characters from Sandman. Um, <laughs> they're so goth and, and just, they can be so 80s. I usually draw death like Susie Sue. <laughs> I can't help it. Um, I love drawing Gem and the Holograms because uh, fashion illustration was something that I was always interested in. And I would love to do more of it. Um, I just can't sew to save my life. So really it would just be stopping at the illustration part. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I get baffled by sleeves. Like sleeves are the bane of my existence. I don't even know how to put <laughs> those on a jacket. Um, but yeah, uh, really just kind of spooky dark characters are are kind of fun. Um, I draw women a lot better than dudes. Uh, so that's something I've personally been trying to get better at. Um, so uh, yeah, I draw a lot of, a lot of women characters. Um, yeah. What I found really cool about your style, like uh, especially your painted style, like, uh, the ghost and the owl. It, it was a. It was kind of a darker book, darker in tone, right, and, and darker in color. But yet, it still popped. Really, you know, the paint still really popped. Uh, oh, thanks. As if it was almost, you know, color, colorful. You know what I'm saying? Even though it was meant to be a darker tone, a drear tone. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up on Lisa Frank, so like <laughs> having right. bright colors is kind of cooked into my brain from from childhood. And honestly, like if my favorite art is the stuff that kind of borders on like beautiful and spooky or cute and spooky and, and being able to kind of take the uh, like the, the subject matter of something that's a little bit of the horror genre or spooky stories and, and kind of just give that a little bit of whimsy, I guess, like whimsy horror is exactly the kind of like seesaw I like to keep (laughs) at a level. You must be a fan of Jill Thompson then. I love her. She's she's a huge influence and and just one of my idols for sure. So she's, awesome. yeah. she's the coolest. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, don't forget the cutie mark. Just her little lightning bolt, which is getting very tiny here. So we're just gonna get a little bit of a suggestion of it in there. Um, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it, I guess. You know. Looks great. It looks great. So, so what do you use to to erase the the lines that you don't need any longer? Right. Yeah. Um, like I, I've seen people use different types of erasers, and some of those squishy erasers almost. Yes. Which is exactly what I'm looking for right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, those squishy erasers are fantastic. Uh, let's see. Here it is. Okay. Woo. So these guys are the best. It's called a kneaded eraser. And I've actually used this to make tiny maquettes, like for ponies. If you, if you want, you can always make a tiny little pony out of it. And honestly, if you are having trouble with your legs. You can use it as an eraser and sculpting. <laughs> yep. Yep. This is, this is kind of brought over from sculpting. So like we were having trouble with that leg before. You just build one. And Maybe that kind of helps you. Kind of a that that is, is that a particular brand, I guess? Uh, not, no, they, there's a bunch of brands. Uh, it's just called a kneaded eraser. Okay. And the way you clean it is by kneading it. Because if you use it a lot, it's going to get a lot of the graphite stuck in there. So to get all that out and to not smudge, you want to kind of give it a good. Uh, very cool. Like you're baking a bread. <laughs> I would play with that. That I like a stress ball all day. Oh my god, this was the art school fidget spinner. Like you know, we would just have classes and just be kind of making little things. I made a whole family out of squirrels, or a whole family of squirrels out of this because I oh, got bored awesome. during a class. Yeah, it's a little rando thing there. Um, but I also have uh, this guy. It's a little uh, battery operated um, eraser. This is really good for for tiny little details. And it just spins and just takes care of that for you. But you definitely don't want to use this on this. Like you're just going to wear it down. Um, another thing I use too is a uh, eraser stick. This thing's pretty great. It's just kind of like a mechanical pencil, but it's a little eraser. This is good for just details as well. Definitely won't want to use this on the whole thing as well. Uh, but yeah, this kneaded eraser, I'm just going to kind of clean up. It's like magic. It's pretty great. Do you ever use... Um... Not necessarily for erasing, but like a, a white marker to to touch up some spots that you need to to create a shine or, or or some white space. Oh yeah, totally. So I use this is like now become the unicorn of sharpies. It's a white water based uh, paint sharpie, and you can usually find them in like the jumbo size and the little super fine point. This is the fine point, which they don't make anymore. So I've been babying this thing. Like <laughs> they don't so make hard. them anymore. Dun, they don't make dun. this size anymore, and it's like the perfect size uh, for a lot of like the swirls I do and like a really nice eye shine. Um, but I also use uh, these guys too. This is a Uniball Signo. If you just go on like jetpens.com or Michaels or AC Moore has these guys, um, they're pretty great when they're fresh, but once you start getting into them, they leave kind of like a track. Can't really tell here, but uh, which is great if you 